Hello and welcome back to another edition of Unreal Engine Study Hall. This is Professor Ben Blau, and today I'd like to show you something that uh, I think is a very cool uh, gameplay mechanic, and it's it's a lot easier to put together. It's a lot easier to script than you might expect. Uh, so first, uh, let me show you this little uh, level that I put together. It's nothing special. Uh, I have a, a character and an enemy, okay? And the enemy chases me around and uh, shoots magic at me, trying to get me. All right, you can see the floating eyeball. No matter where I go, it's trying to shoot me and kill me, all right? Now, this character doesn't yet have any defensive capabilities or offensive capabilities. Of course, we can add them later. But what I wanted to focus on today is an evasion mechanic, uh, namely that of teleportation. So I'm imagining that uh, this character is a, a magic user of some kind in a fantasy game and has the ability to teleport away from her adversary um, you know, during during melee combat or ranged combat if necessary. And that's what we're going to do today, all right? So uh, what I have is, um, as my third-person character, you can see I, I edited the default third-person character. And if we go into that uh, blueprint, you can see what I've done mostly in the viewport is I've got a different character mesh. Uh, this one is called Furry S2. Okay, let me, uh, uh, I guess I can't unselect the mesh without selecting something else, but that's what it looks like. Uh, it looks strange before because technically there's another skeletal mesh that's being used as the hair because this mesh is technically bald. So we have this connected to a hair socket and parented by uh, the rest of the mesh so that it uh, follows the character around. Okay, uh, so uh, I changed that out, and also uh, for the main mesh, uh, this particular uh, mesh came with an animation blueprint, and I just uh, uh, assigned it right here, okay? That's all. So we switched out the skeletal mesh uh, for this one, and we used the animation blueprint that came with, okay? So I didn't have to retarget <coughs> uh, very much, uh, although I will tell you right up front that I did tar uh, I did retarget one animation. So if we were to go into the furry cat, uh, excuse me, the furry um, what you call it folder uh, into her animations, you can see that uh, I did retarget something called Mage Shout. This is an animation sequence. I must have done it twice for some reason because I've got a copy of it here, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, from which I've made an animation montage. And uh, I'm going to be calling this montage uh, during the uh, teleportation sequence that we're going to be making. Uh, where did that come from? Okay, so I got that from this mage animation set. Okay, this is, I think, a paid asset on the uh, marketplace. And uh, if you wanted to use one of these uh, animations, by all means, uh, this is a pretty good animation set. You can get these uh, or use whatever animations you like. I just uh, brought these in because I had them and they were compatible with 5.1.1. And uh, that's the version that I'm using today. I should also point out, I guess at, uh, at the very beginning here, that I will be using the new enhanced input system and uh, just a fair warning, it's not that difficult. You'll, you'll probably be able to pick up on exactly how that works, even if you haven't uh, used it before, uh, just by watching the very, very simple setup that I do today. So let's start there. Let's start by uh, creating um, an input, uh, an action mapping, essentially, what used to be called an action mapping. I guess it's still called an action mapping for our third person character. So we're going back into that blueprint. Oops, this is not what I need. Okay, go back into that blueprint for a third person character. Remember, we changed out the mesh and the animation blueprint. So we're playing as f this character, Furry, right now. I don't know why they gave her that name, Furry. But anyway, I like this character a lot. 
and it's got some nice uh, idle animations and you know better than the generic animations that come I think with uh, uh, the default third person level so I like the animations uh, as well um, so in that folder, if I go back here, uh, the third person folder, we now have this subdirectory called input. And if I double click in there, we've got another subfolder that says actions. If I open that, there are a few action mappings already here. One for jump, one for look, one for move, IA underscore input action. Okay, that's what the IA stands for. And uh, going back to here, we have our, uh, this is our input mapping, okay? So uh, if we, 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 they call it an input mapping context, you can see right there in the pop-up. And if we open this, you can see, uh, if I move my meeting controls out of the way, you can see that there are various input mappings, like we used to see under the input tab, uh, or be able to set up under the input tab, uh, in project settings okay so it's very very similar so uh, let's let's actually do this then um, we'll go back and we're gonna make a, an action mapping first so we're gonna come into this folder right click and this time we're going to hover over input select input action and here's we where we get to name it okay I a underscore teleport is what I'll call that okay we can open that up briefly and we don't really need to change anything because this type of event that I'm going to be calling is of the variety digital bool there are other types of events that you can uh, create here or value types uh, but uh, uh, this is going to be just uh, is it pressed you know it's a uh, the button pressed or is it not pressed type of thing so it's a, a digital bool uh, type of event. I could type a description, um, uh, teleport, even though this isn't used anywhere, teleportation, input, in case anybody isn't clear on that, <laughs> input action teleport, I think it ought to be pretty clear. And we can save that. Uh, I did not have to type this here. This isn't actually used by anything, okay? So we can uh, save that and close it. And now I can add it to the context, okay? That is, that is this asset, which I still have docked up here, okay? So let me undock it and show it to you again. So we're in third person, input. This is the input mapping context. And I have to add that action mapping, that IA teleport. I've got to add that to the context. So we go to the context and we see where all of our action mappings are up here and just like before just like before I'm gonna hit the plus button and uh, where it says none I'm going to select the input action that I just made input action teleport which by the way I can now call right in this character blueprint and I just now need to uh, bind an input to it so we're gonna I'm gonna use uh, just the letter T so let's select keyboard and we'll get the letter T for teleport. Okay, that makes sense. That's really it. Okay, so uh, we're going to hit save on that as well. And uh, what we've just accomplished, therefore, is very similar to what we might have done under, under project settings previously. And you can continue adding to that uh, list as long as you want to. More and more uh, input actions, or uh, I think you can do ac uh, access mappings in there too. Uh, although I haven't uh, delved that deeply into it yet. Okay, I'm just using these for events so far. All right, so uh, getting back into the third-person character event graph at this point, uh, one thing that happens to be true uh, right now is that uh, event begin play is sort of spoken for at the very, very top of the uh, third-person character blueprint. And, uh, you know, obviously, if I were to try to type in begin play and try to get that below here to start off some new code, it's just going to take me right back to the top. So there are different ways that you can uh, find substitutes for begin play. And honestly, I have to admit, I'm not exactly sure how safe these are to do or what the caveats might be against doing them. But notice that this actor has many, many components that uh, auto-activate. For example, the follow camera. 
Uh, if I search for auto activate, well, it has that characteristic. So uh, once my uh, uh, character is spawned in the world, that's when this activates. And there is such an event as on component activated. So I, I would think that it should be safe to use that as a substitute in certain cases. If you're going to have that component anyway, I can't imagine it being very expensive to fire off a single execution pulse uh, off of a uh, on-component activated. Uh, but I might be wrong, okay? And if I am wrong, please let me know, and uh, I will uh, uh, make that correction in a future video. I admit that I don't know. But what you can do, uh, if you're concerned, is you can just pull off of here and make a sequence at the very beginning and we're going to be using that sequence for something uh, in just a little while but uh, keep in mind that the sequence is still going to allow the original execution to flow up here and uh, we're going to uh, uh, need this sequence though because I'm gonna have something else happening off of begin play uh, other than the uh, uh, adding the input mapping for this new Enhanced input local player subsystem. Ah, okay, so I said that correctly. Okay, so just like uh, at any time, perhaps, we could uh, just find some free space below and uh, right-click, and we're going to search for the input action underscore teleport, okay? And you can see input enhanced action events. We don't want the value, we want the event. So input action teleport. And you'll immediately notice that there are more output execution pins than you might be accustomed to. That's okay, because the one that is, like, pressed is this one that says start it. Okay? So let's start by keeping it simple. We are inside of our third-person character blueprint, and we have uh, 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 replaced the mesh with furry, so it's a different-looking third-person character. It's not... Uh, uh, Quinn anymore um, but we're gonna pull off of started and I'm simply going to search for a node called teleport teleport and it's here under transformation teleport okay and it needs to know uh, uh, basically what the destination location is going to be it already should know that it's itself right because we're inside of the, the uh, third person character blueprint but it needs a tr uh, it needs basically a location to uh, teleport. So let's try this. Uh, I'll just hard code a value here, and uh, let's just say 800 on the z axis, and do nothing but that, and compile and save. So let's go play the game. And if I hit my T button. I'm way up in the air. Okay, so uh, I can uh, set other offsets here, right? I could also split the struct and get random floats uh, for these if I wanted to. So for example, let's split the struct pin so that uh, I can choose a random float in range for these. Uh, that way it can be a little bit more or a lot more unpredictable uh, where she's going to end up. I'm going to do one for uh, X and for Y and just keep the Z hard-coded up 800 units. Uh, let's say that uh, from wherever she is, she can go forward uh, uh, or backward, I don't know, 800 units. Uh, but I guess the same uh, number of units that she's up in the air. Or maybe it should be more. Maybe we should go from negative 1,000, I really didn't measure how big our play space was, to 1,000 for X and for Y. So highlight that, negative 1,000. 1,000. And uh, we'll just keep the Z a constant 800. Unless we decide to change it, of course. Okay, tactical teleportation. Let's see how this feels. 
Okay. The monsters that that music is a distractingly loud and there's no other sound in the level so you know what I think is I'm gonna get that music cue out of there okay because that is distracting okay so now he is coming after furry and if I teleport you never know where I might end up it's pretty random okay so I like this now the problem though is that this is best used uh, if I'm close to this uh, creature or if this creature has caught up with me. That way when I press the button and it moves forwards or backwards from where I am by, I thought, oops, I fell off the edge of the world. Uh, from wherever I am, I'm, be, I'm going to be moving away from the character. But on the other hand, uh, uh, you know, I if I'm farther away and then I decide to teleport just as a a random thing to do, potentially I could be moved toward the character. So we're going to control for some of those things uh, as we continue blueprint, uh, blueprinting this. Um, so I wanted there to be an animation uh, and maybe some sound associated with uh, the teleportation. So um, I did retarget uh, from another animation pack one animation. I think I may have already showed it, shown it to you. It's from this Mage animation set. So if I were to go into the furry animations folder, um, I made a montage out of that. I don't think you actually saw it, but if you want to just see what the sequence looks like, looks like that. Okay. They even have some nice little notifies in here that we could use if we wanted to. Okay, I don't know that we're going to, but uh, we could. We could even add additional notifies. And uh, when this animation is played, of course, um, <laughs> she'll have hair, okay? And uh, the montage is just the same, so I'm sorry. I just made the montage out of that, but she is unclothed, okay? This is the montage that's going to be uh, called uh, whenever we teleport. So uh, we can do that uh, right off, okay? Just uh, in the same sense that we could uh, play any animation montage. I'm going to do it the way that I'm accustomed. Uh, off of started, we are going to start by uh, calling disable movement, referencing our character movement component. So we'll type disable movement until we find that and it says character movement in parentheses meaning that that comes from our character movement component and uh, it will target that automatically for us but if that weren't there for any reason you could always just grab the character movement component and connect it okay so disable movement from here we're going to choose or uh, search for excuse me stop movement immediately and again, you could choose the one with character movement already targeted, or if you choose this one, you can just double dip on the reference that you already have in the graph. Okay, so now uh, it's that same character movement component. And then prior to all of this stuff, or maybe during, maybe even during, maybe I'm going to put a sequence here. I have an idea. Sequence because um, I want to offset the timing of the teleportation so that it happens part way through the playing of the animation. So I think I'm gonna actually have this off of then two, not off of then zero. So we'll disconnect that and uh, bring all of this stuff down accordingly, okay? Uh, and right here, uh, what we can do is we can play anim montage. Okay, so this is something, uh, again, I had to previously retarget this. So um, if you're not familiar with uh, animation retargeting, I have a video for that as well. And uh, um, if you're interested, just uh, say so in the comments and uh, I'll post a link for that. <clears throat> but in any case, uh, for this anim montage here, I'm going to use the shout montage that we made that came from that uh, mage pack that I showed you earlier on, okay? Now, after that, uh, what we want to do is uh, flow control delay in order to allow the character to complete the montage before anything else happens. 
And luck, luck, lucky for us, uh, a play and a montage n uh, node, the return value is a float representing its duration. Okay, so uh, we're going to let the montage play, and then uh, that's going to happen with a delay until the uh, to allow the montage to complete before we set the movement mode. Set movement mode, character movement. Again, I could disconnect that and just, you know, drag off from uh, this one here. I pointed at it with my finger and realized you can't see that. But uh, um, this does no harm being here, so I'm not going to really worry about it. It could be off of that same node that we had earlier, but not a big deal, okay? And the new movement mode is going to be set to walking, okay? Um, now I want to know though uh, I don't want I don't want this to happen simultaneously. I don't want to have a teleport and for the montage to happen at the same time. This is not going to look the way that I want and uh, I have the feeling that I'll be able to show you what I mean by that. Okay, so here we are playing the game and I go to teleport and then she plays the montage. Okay, the montage doesn't start until after the tele teleportation. But uh, I want the actual teleportation to occur about part way through the montage. So let's find out uh, exactly how long this is. Okay, so this is uh, 2.68 seconds and I think that right around right around maybe where her hands are fully extended right around 1.13 or 110 or 1 1.15 uh, seconds into the montage I think that is where the teleportation should happen so that prior to that uh, she's sort of like invoking it and then when her arms are extended that is when poof she's teleported so let's remember 1.15 or just dock this for a minute in case we forget go back here and we're gonna delay the teleportation itself so we'll get a delay and uh, I think uh, 1.15 was what we were going for there okay I think so compile and save and let's see if this feels better in play okay so do 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 pow okay so no that feels late to me so uh, maybe I misjudged something here but in any case I'm just going to uh, take a guess let's try 0.9 teleport <laughs> to our death I should have put blocking volumes around I'm so terribly sorry this is just a, a scaled up box and some mega scans around it uh, a cube that is so yeah I think I wanted a little bit earlier so no this is not what I need come on Ben it's this delay right here how about 0 0.81 0.81 I said 0.81 okay and we'll see how that feels compile and save and play I just want to see how the teleportation timing is ah, I like that ja. Ja. feels good okay all right uh, and um, what we can then do also is we can uh, uh, associate particle systems and sound effects with these. Now I did prepare a couple of things in advance, uh, full disclosure. Uh, I brought in some uh, these KY magic effects for and uh, what's eyeball magic? Uh, oh this is something I made, that's the projectile that the uh, eyeball is making when it shoots its magic at me. Uh, what else do I have here? Uh, v VFX magic spells, okay, so uh, I might have to look for some particles that uh, I like. So let's have a look. Let's go into KY magic effects particles. And a lot of these look great from the thumbnails. Let's see uh, what this chance circle... 
for what the spell circle looks like. And double click that. It is a legacy uh, cascade system. It has not been converted uh, to uh, Niagara. Okay, so right now, okay, there we go. I guess it's interesting. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean it's beautiful. I could not, I could not do better. Uh, but it's not. Uh, I don't think that's the droid I'm looking for. So, for prior to what's this dark core? K Y dark core. Ooh, I like that. Okay, maybe for when she reappears, that dark core would be useful to us. And what's this dark level one? I like the fact that it's, uh, well, let's see. Maybe this should be as we're gathering our power and then uh, she sparks into existence in the air somewhere. So uh, we'll try to remember these, I guess. Uh, uh, PKY Dark dark Core and PKY Dark Level 1. They're both good. i um, just looking to see if there's anything else here that could be interesting. What is this one here? Ooh. Oh man, that is really cool. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a couple of these. I don't know if I want them to look like that though. Okay, so... Uh, we like Dark Core. I think that should be when she's in the in the air, and maybe this effect, this shock spark B, uh, yeah, uh, the shock spark B, can be um, when she appears uh, after the teleportation. So let's go back in there. I'm leaving this just kind of around, just so that I don't forget uh, what we liked here. Okay, so um, right here we've got uh, when the montage is played. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, right before we play the montage, that's a fine, that's a fine time to, to start a particle effect and to play a sound effect. So starting here off of the then zero, uh, what we can do is we can spawn emitter at location, spawn emitter at location. And we'll straighten all this out uh, a little bit later, but let's just for now, we'll lift this up a little bit. And let's remember which it's uh, Shock Spark B. Okay, so we'll search for it here. Um, or I suppose I could browse for it and then just uh, pop it in with the uh, arrow. Let me see. Shock Spark B is down here. Shock Spark, where are you? there okay so I can put you in like so without having to search okay we can play with the the uh, scale of it later but remember we're in the third person character blueprint so I can type get actor location knowing that it's for uh, ourselves and uh, providing this emitter with a location to spawn so this is going to spawn uh, uh, at the location that we are before we actually teleport, okay? And then after we teleport, I can spawn the other emitter, spawn emitter at location. Um, and this will be whatever other asset we liked, okay? So it was dark. Core. It was one or the other. Dark core. Let's find out. Dark core or dark level. Dark core. That's pretty cool. I kind of like that. So uh, dark core. It's got to be that. Okay. And uh, where to play it? Uh, again, get actor location. I know I've got it up there, but it's fine to get it another uh, another instance of that down here. Get actor location and plug that up. 
okay, to our actor's current location. I could probably close this entire mess of windows right now, okay? Um, and let's make this uh, look a little less gross, okay? So we can bring this closer in. Uh, we can take all of this stuff, move it to the right, so that this guy can fit in, and that this one can fit in. That's the get actor at location, zoomed way out. Okay, and this delay can be seen as going to this teleport as long as we get this information out of the way which of course you can edit to your uh, preferences and according to the size of the environment that you're in, okay? And I just uh, got another get actor location here for this emitter so that I wouldn't have to uh, just pull another wire all the way across to here and do a bunch of reroute nodes. Okay, so I think that that is looking okay. Let's bring that in a little bit more. This doesn't have to be dangling out here like this. And that looks fine. So we can comment this, letter C, and we'll call this teleportation logic. Uh, if I spelled that correctly, let's see, did I? No, of course I didn't. Teleportation logic. Uh, so undo. Uh, let's change the comment. Teleportation logic. Okay, my eyesight's not so good. But I think that just about anybody should be able to uh, make sense of this if they were to just read through it. Okay, so she's teleporting, uh, uh, well, to random, random locations in this, in this uh, particular case. We could expand on this further, and I just might, but let's just test what we have so far. Compile and save and get back into play mode and just see how our particles feel. So let's teleport. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that feels kind of cool. And uh, I have a confession to make. I have a sound cue that I prepared in advance. And I put someplace. Maybe it's in here. And it's not great. It's just uh, roughly matches the timing. So. Okay. So the teleport uh, SFX sound cue, I made that in my digital audio workstation just before I started shooting just now. So we can go back into the teleport logic and include that uh, every time uh, every time it needs to happen, quite frankly. And uh, let's see now. Um, Where would I like to put that? Maybe right before the spawn emitter at location. Right here, I can do a play sound. Now this one, um, I'm not going to do at location. I deliberately didn't want this to spatialize. This is a highly processed 2D stereo sound in this case. Sounds that play at location, uh, at locations that need to really have a very clear localization. I, I tend to do those in mono. Uh, so this one is not meant to have, uh, you know, it's just a big sort of, uh, you know, surrounds you type of sound uh, of magic. Okay, so um, it doesn't uh, really have a specific point of origin other than where you are at the moment anyway. So I still have that selected, so I should just be able to pop that in there. Play sound 2D. It might be loud. We'll find out. We can always adjust that. And let's see how that feels. Teleport. Nice. She scoots a little. I just wait before I start running a little bit. Okay, so there's that. Now, um, you saw that phenomenon where uh, there was a couple of times where I ended up moving closer to the enemy rather than farther away from the enemy. 
it is possible to uh, control for that. And uh, that's one of the reasons why um, I was interested in the event begin play up here and adding a sequence. It's in an inconvenient location, and I cannot have more than one event begin play in my Blueprint event graph. So up here, what I'm going to do off of then uh, one is I'm going to get actor of class. Okay, I don't need to get all actors of class. I just need to get one actor of class, and it is my uh, enemy. Okay, that enemy blueprint is called BP underscore eyeball. And um, I did not make that uh, on screen, but if you watched my video that uh, came out recently on uh, Attack of the Drones, I did it exactly the same way, exactly the same way. No different. The only difference is the mesh that I used. The logic is the same, and uh, you can pick that up, how to make this enemy that follows you, always looks at you, and shoots either science fiction uh, you know, weapons at you or magic or bullets or whatever. Um, uh, I covered that in the Attack of the Drones video. So please do watch that uh, to set up that part if you, feel, if you feel you'd like to. Today this video, however, is just about just the teleportation mechanic, okay? So let's see where we are. I have to remind myself. Oh, we were going to see if it was too loud. Teleport. Yeah, and I fell off planet Earth again. Can I teleport back? Yeah, how about that? I fell off the edge of the world. Okay, so yeah, it's a little bit loud, so I suppose I could just turn down the uh, volume mark multiplier on the queue itself, maybe 0.5 or 0.45, I don't know. But we'll save. And remember, uh, always bounce your stuff out of your DAW uh, low uh, on purpose, because if you boost, you don't want to run out of headroom. You know, I, in this case, I'm attenuating, but if you boost the volume, you don't want to digitally clip. Okay, so uh, I think that this was probably bounced out at around negative 12 dBFS or something like that uh, on a peak, uh, as, it, as registered on a peak meter, uh, ppm. Okay, so one more time. Make sure that everything everything syncs up the audio, the anim the uh, animation, and the particle effects. If I was more of a genius with part particle effects, I would know how to make uh, the I would uh, you know I could probably figure it out if I messed with them. But adjust the lifespan or the duration of those particle systems so that uh, uh, it dis the the first one disappears. Um, right at the time that uh, the teleportation occurs so that I don't see the remnants of it. Uh, but uh, I'm just uh, not that well versed with uh, particle systems yet, So, but I'm working on it. I'll get there eventually. But uh, for uh, just using assets that I had access to from the marketplace, I'm very happy and pleased by this, okay? That was just the sound cue for the sound effect that I made. I had it uh, docked for some reason. Um, the reason that I could play that montage, by the way, and I failed to point this out, and I really am sorry that I didn't think to do this in advance, let me just uh, compile and save my character blueprint, is um, I'll remind you that this character Mesh, Furry, uh, did come with uh, two animation blueprints. And let me just browse you to the one that I am using here, okay? This is uh, the blueprint that I'm using. We'll open that up, and I want to point out that because I used an anim montage, I should have pointed this out at the beginning of the lesson, and, I, and I'm terribly sorry that I didn't. I tried to delete everything that I did before uh, just so that I would have to redo it so that you could see it. Uh, this blueprint does not come with this slot default slot node. So if I were to delete that and connect it back up the way that it started, okay, uh, let's compile and save this. And our system is going to break. It's not going to work anymore because there is no slot that it can play that montage. Okay, so let's go ahead and play. Uh, can I play right out of here? Okay, so let's see what happens. The only thing that worked is the part that I hard-coded, the 800, the plus 800. But actually, excuse me. Oh, I see what's not happening. The montage, the animation montage, uh, the teleportation itself is working, but she is just playing her jump, uh, her 
Her falling montage, the is in air uh, uh, animation sequence uh, from her state machine. Uh, so anyway, um, what I had to do, uh, it, it, cause I knew in advance I wanted to play montages is pull off of here, search for slot and find slot default slot. Just make sure that comes in between the default state machine and the local to, uh, local to component node, compile and save that animation blueprint. And that is true for, um, any animation blueprint where you're going to want to play montages that are. Uh, made from animations that are not inside a state machine uh, in your animation blueprint. And in this case, that uh, animation that I wanted to play uh, was not in the state machine, and it would be uh, harder work to make a brand new state for that anyway. So I just assume stop her in her tracks and uh, play that animation. Okay. So um, next, I wanted to control for uh, um, the uh, the enemy itself, right? So um, I want to get that uh, enemy class, which we'll remember is, um, I think, I. Okay, there is the blueprint that I made for it, I, uh, BP underscore eyeball. So uh, we're going to get a reference to that right here, okay? Get actor of class right here. And uh, I am going to promote it to a variable up here and allow the setter to set it, okay? And let's just name the variable. Uh, we, I can see what it is, but we'll just name it, uh, rename eyeball reference. Okay, great. So if I need things like the location or anything like that of that eyeball, I can just, I don't have to go up to the top of this blueprint uh, uh, to get it, okay? I can just bring it in. So I think that uh, we might be able to make use of the eyeball if we know its location, then we can do some math in before the teleport that basically uh, makes sure that uh, it's take, we're taking into consideration where the eyeball is and how far away from it we decide to move relative to its location. So I don't think I'm gonna use random float in range nodes to determine my locations anymore. This is gonna be the result of some math that we'll do. So let's delete those for the time being and let's get our eyeball reference into this part of the graph and get the actor's location. Get actor location. And uh, I'm going to split this struct pin so that we've got access, access to uh, all three axes. I'm not going to make use of the z-axis, I don't think, because I like going up the roughly 800 units that we do every time. Uh, and I don't want that to necessarily change. I mean, unless I want to have it be, f I, I don't want it to be random or changing in different circumstances. I want to hard code that. Um, but if we know where this one is, uh, I can, um, uh, uh, you know, decide that I'm going to add to that value or uh, in order to move toward uh, closer, you know, or farther away from it, okay? So I can take this actor location and I can pull off that pin. And now this is a float. So if you were in Unreal Engine 4, you would have to search float plus float, okay? Um, but uh, if I just type add or plus, um, this operator, it's smart. It's smarter than it, used to, than it used to be. So it's likely to give you the type of addition pin that you need, okay? So let's get for X and Y addition, add, operators add. And if I wanted to on the X and Y value, I can always make sure that I am, uh, the you know, wherever the X and Y values happen to be for the enemy, okay? Remember who this is, this is the eyeball, okay? Uh, that we are always a certain number of units farther, okay? That plus that many more units away from it on the Y and the Z axis. Now, I could make that random if I wanted to, okay? Um, let's uh, go crazy here if I wanted to make that a little bit more unpredictable. I could say random float and range for both of these. 
and then specify, you know, uh, the minimum distance and the maximum distance. I could even make that uh, dependent on how much mana the character has or something like this. Uh, uh, another alternative, um, if you wanted to make it more random, but ha but not have it be as random, uh, you can choose uh, select float. This is a node that you don't see used very often. Select float, and you get an A and B value. In fact, let's let's do that. Copy and paste, just because people don't see this node ever used, I don't ever see it used in tutorials, and it's got this boolean for pick A, okay? So we can just get a random bool, okay, a random bool, and connect it to that so it will pick A randomly, okay? So we'll connect another one, copy, paste. I don't want to use the same one uh, because it would, it would be uh, consistent between these two, and I don't want it to be, okay? So let's say we're going to get at least... Uh, uh, 700 units away from the thing, or we're going to get uh, 1,000 units away from the thing. Okay? Oop, that's 100. 1,000. And we'll do it for both. At least 700 units away, or 1,000 units away. If this was a random float and range, then it could be something in between. Okay? Um, and that, that also is fine, but I just wanted to show these because <laughs> it's almost never that I have a chance to show anybody these nodes, and you ought to know that they exist because, you know, you can do things with them. So my new value for X and my new value for Y is going to be wherever, wherever the uh, enemy is and that many units away from it, at least 700 uh, or 1,000 units away on both the x-axis and the y-axis. So I think if my logic is right, I don't know if I have to take my own uh, current location into consideration, the, the character location, but I think this ought to work without that. We're going to find out. So let's see. Start playing. Now let's get close. Teleport. Teleport. I teleported away. Teleported away. Away. Okay, that time it looked like it was trying to teleport away, but I think I got blocked, okay? Remember, this mesh will block a teleport, okay? So you got to be careful with that. So I might want to get a path. You know, the, the, the uh, character can block me. Teleport. Uh, if I didn't want the character to block me, I suppose I can change its collision. Uh, so let's go into the eyeball. And uh, the I'll just type collision up here so I can get into the vicinity of anything I need. Um, let's see. Is anything blocking me? It's like this character mesh. Let me see what that has as block. Okay. It's ignoring pawns. That's good. So the capsule, uh, the collision, is blocking. Okay, so this is the one, the capsule. Let's change that to custom. And it will, it will retain all of our, our uh, things here, but we can uh, have it not block us because I think we're a pawn. And uh, so that can ignore us. The arrow, I don't think, has collision. The mesh, uh, the collision, is it blocking pawn? No, it's not. So compile and save. Let me see if I can pass through this eyeball just for now, just so that our uh, teleports will work without collision. Can I pass through you? Just passing through. Okay, now... I don't think we have to worry about it ever blocking us. Uh-oh. Uh, well, I, I uh, am eating crow now. Okay, so let's see. Uh, maybe we can work that out in code. So uh, the eyeball, uh, I can go back and redefault all of those components back to how they were as far as their collision was concerned. And that was that, and it was that. Uh, collision. I don't think I changed anything there. 
And yeah, okay, so we'll recompile that and save it. Okay, so let's try to work the problem here, not in the eyeball blueprint, but in the third person character blueprint. Okay, so um, what we want is to move, uh, let's see, what did I do? Select float. Oh, I just didn't, I don't think, I didn't finish the, I didn't finish the code correctly, excuse me. Uh, these select floats are going to go into the addition. <laughs> I bet so many of you caught me. I bet so many of you caught me when I did this. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to select, uh, we're going to, it's going to be the location of our actor. Uh, this was just plus and minus, you see, to uh, uh, our character's own location. That's not what I was trying to do. Remember, we were trying to be plus or minus, uh, or excuse me, at least this far and maximally that far away from the character's location. And these were supposed to fit, uh, f uh, to feed those addition nodes. And then the addition nodes uh, were to provide the new X value and the new Y value. Okay. So hopefully this will always get us farther away. I think it will. And if it doesn't, we'll fix that too. But I think it will. Okay. Teleport. <laughs> Yeah. Always gets us as far as far away as at least 700 units, if not a thousand units. And uh, in my case, uh, I'm fortunate that uh, uh, I've I've made it so that there are enough units to get me back if I fall off the ledge. Uh, as I said, this is just a scaled up cube and some mega scans, rocks around it, and a sky that I put together uh, to put this tutorial together. So now we'll save that. And of course, everything else that could make this level better would. Better lighting, uh, better music, uh, footsteps, um, uh, some sound for the enemy itself. But I rather like the way that this turned out. So as a evasive mechanism, oh, that projectile needs a sound. Maybe camera shakes, especially as it hits whatever it hits, maybe a hit effect for that matter when it hits whatever it hits, because there isn't one currently. currently. Uh, human vocalizations could be cool. Hey, let's try that. I have an idea. I know that I imported the human vocalizations. I think, I'd, oh yeah, uh, a pack from the Epic Marketplace. So let's look under one of these female ones. There's a bunch of cues already here. <laughs> On a longer one. Uh oh, oh no. Oh, tell me we didn't crash at this very inopportune moment. Something got stuck. Okay, let me pause the video and see. Well, I hear my hard drive spinning up, so maybe, uh, maybe my hard drive. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you know it went right to that. Uh, I think it opened that queue or something. Yeah. I want to find one that sounds like it would go with uh, her expending effort to do that teleportation. That's a lot of enthusiasm. Oh, these, these get uh, higher in intensity as uh, we go along. So let's look for something in maybe A. I don't hate that, okay? So let's go back to um, our blueprint uh, right when we spawn that original emitter. Let's see. Where should I play that? Because I might have to delay that into time. I might have to delay that into time so that it works well here, okay? So I might want to add another pin to the sequence so that I can do another play sound at location here. This is her voice, so I will do play sound at location. So uh, get actor location for ourself is somewhere, ah, it's way over there. Eh, it's all right, I'll reuse this one. That's us, okay. And the sound is gonna be the one that I still have highlighted, okay. 
But probably before this, I'm going to need some kind of delay because the timing is likely to sound off until I delay it into, into place. Right now, it's being delayed, so let's just zero that out until I listen to it in context and decide how much delay it needs to sound right. Right? Right, so I don't really want that to happen until the actual teleportation happens. So maybe what I can do is just spawn, I could get rid of that pin and spawn this sound here after this delay. That might be the right time to play it. Get rid of that delay and also get rid of this pin. We don't need more in our sequence perhaps. Okay. This is making a little bit more room so things stay readable. Okay. That's a little funky. Yeah. I'm going to fix that up a little bit just so that we don't have as much wires crossing over as we do. Okay, that, that just looks a little ugly to me. So let's make room for it. Pull these over some. Maybe straighten this connection and pull this over so that the add nodes can be near what they are feeding, closer to what they are feeding, and then somehow we can make it more evident uh, how we got the, uh, val the values for them. So this is one float or the other at random. And this is one float or the other at random. Let's see if we can, if we have enough room, we can make this look pretty good, I think. Okay, we'll straighten that connection first. Bring these back down closer to here. Okay, that's not so bad. Uh, what wire is crossing here? It's in that. It's in that. So. That's where any, reroute, uh, where any reroute nodes are going to have to take place, I think, is for this get actor location from our enemy, okay? Our eyeball enemy, that get actor location. Uh, so we'll reroute around those, but let's get our random bools close to our select float nodes. And then we will just reroute a little bit around those so that they are easier for people. That's coming out of there, that's for sure. And I guess I could just make that lower. Ah, I kind of like keeping these together. So maybe what I'll do is make these lower and pull out our comment window a little bit. Okay. And uh, that's not so bad. I can take this get a reroute for that, excuse me. Mo moving reroute, re reroute nodes is uh, sometimes the bane of my existence. That's a little dramatic. It's not really the bane of my existence. When we have lunch together, I'll tell you the real bane of my existence. But that's private. Okay, so that's ugly too, but at least it gets the wires out of the way so people can see what's happening there. All right, so yeah, making uh, the most beautiful looking blueprints may not be my strongest suit, but we can get things a little bit more compact. Okay, so let's follow this. Oops, uh, let's bring this stuff back as far as we can anyway. This stuff can come back considerably. Straighten connections. That can come back considerably. Boy, I'm spending more time on uh, making this blueprint look nice than on the actual meaningful part of the tutorial. But in any case, um, I just uh, want to set the right example, you know. It's, it's not okay to leave your blueprints looking like mine did, okay? 
So uh, if one wanted to begin to understand this, oh, yeah, huh. great job, Ben. I thought I was straightening nodes and I was crooked, crit, crookeding them. So I guess I had to be zoomed in a little bit more than I was to judge this accurately. So we'll fix it up. Gee whiz. Get actor location. Okay, now is that a straight connection? I don't mind that that's a little like that. Let's see. That was curved anyway, so that doesn't bother me. All this stuff. Let's take all this stuff, actually, and straighten that connection. Bring our window down a little bit. Get this guy a little closer. And the reference to the eyeball that we got off of the Get Actor of Class. Pull that in. Okay, so now I think I've got something that most people would be able to follow. Okay, so here we go. And this is even too big on this side, I think, unless we zoom in. That's weird that it changes scale when you zoom in. But anyway, um, I made an enhanced input. Okay, so let's close any unnecessary tabs just to do our review here. Okay, um, most of... Uh, this was based on the default third-person character, which I just simply edited, so I'll reiterate that. It's still in the same folder that it started, okay? And it is still the same person, the same character that it always was. It looks like I didn't uh, compile or save something, so I'll do that uh, right now. And I'm going to keep this uh, blueprint open, because this is all that code that we just did for the uh, teleport teleportation. And I might even add that... Uh... Oh, did we add the vocalization? I actually forgot. Did we do it yet? <laughs> okay, yeah, that was cool. Uh, and yeah, that uh, vocalization's a little bit long, a little bit loud. So where did I put that? Play sound at location right here, and I'm just gonna hard code 0.8 on the volume multiplier on that, and save that for now. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so that's working brilliantly. And uh, so the input actions are in the same uh, parent folder as that. So where you have your third person character, remember all I really did to begin with, most of it was in the viewport. I just changed out the mesh. And once I had the main character mesh, I had to switch out the animation blueprint also. Um, I could have retargeted an entire blueprint, except uh, the blueprint that this character comes with is good. The only thing that I had to retarget was that one animation. And uh, I put it in the uh, furry folder because that's where the mesh is located. And remember that retargeting animations is based on meshes. Uh, retargeting animations, I beg your pardon, is based on uh, you know making IK rigs and, I and IK re retargeters uh, using meshes. So in the animations folder uh, is where I just drop those and there's that montage, okay? And by the way, when I made the sound effect uh, for the teleport in my digital audio workstation, um, the way that I knew how, uh, how long to make it is just by uh, looking at the, the duration of the animation sequence and the uh, duration of the animation montage and finding out, I actually did cheat a little bit because I looked at this in advance and I found out roughly where I wanted that to crest, okay? And I, I you know, I calculated, you know, uh, how much into the sound effect that, where, where did I want the climax of the sound effect to be? Because it builds up and then it crests and then it trails out. I didn't care about the tail being too long. I only cared about the leading edge matching up with this animation because I had identified this animation as the one that I was going to use in advance of making this video and also in advance of making the sound effect. So when I designed the sound effect, the ramping up uh, uh, was over this same duration from the beginning of the montage, excuse me for moving that, from the beginning of the montage up until where the arms were fully extended. And that's why the uh, sound effect is able to match up. Okay. 
So uh, I guess that's it. Um, we can make a, a, a more complicated system. If I wanted her to be able to teleport to a particular location, that's a little bit different. Uh, that involves typically using target point actors and placing them at specific locations uh, throughout a level. If I want to teleport to a certain house or a certain city or a certain location in a big level, I would probably have a, a, a target point and a target point uh, for a level is sort of just like a generic scene component uh, for a blue, uh, for an actor, okay, a uh, blueprint actor. Um, it just is something that has a transform. And you can put these in whatever locations that you want things to spawn. They're great for specifying spawn, spawn locations. But they're also good for specifying transforms where you might want to teleport something. Uh, and I can just put a target point in some other building all the way across my landscape or whatever in some completely different uh, area of my world. And um, uh, when I teleport to that, I do it through the level blueprint because we can get references to uh, everything that we need, the character, the character's location. Uh, we can uh, cast to our character from the level blueprint so that we can we can communicate between the level blueprint and the uh, character through a cast so that we can know when we're calling the teleport function from within our character blueprint. And then uh, the character blueprint can handle the task of teleporting us to the target point transform because the uh, target point is easily referenced, very easily referenced in the level blueprint as well. So if you'd like to see teleportation to specific locations, okay, as opposed to just relative locations to our enemy. Uh, this is, that's why I'm calling this video uh, tactical teleportation, because we are doing it in relationship to an enemy that is marauding toward us. But uh, there's other forms of teleportation, like teleporting up onto an enemy spacecraft, or not an enemy spacecraft, hopefully, but uh, teleporting up onto a spaceship that's waiting for you in space, or teleporting this uh, character back to her lair, uh, uh, or, you know, uh, magic shop, or <laughs> wherever she gets her powers. Uh, we could teleport her to that specific location. But that's, like I say, done typically with target points and through the level blueprint, and that would be a separate video. Anyway, uh, this went on for an hour and seven minutes, um, which uh, is long, but for me, uh, well, if you get to know my videos, they tend to be on the long side because I'm still, I'm still finding my voice doing this. Anyhow, uh, I hope that you liked learning about this. You can watch it uh, as many times as you need to, and uh, uh, you'll be able to uh, teleport from now on with sound and uh, animation, okay? So thanks again for joining me. This has been Ben Blau, and this has been uh, a Tactical Teleportation for the Intrepid Blueprinter, Unreal Engine Study Hall with Professor Ben Blau. I'll see you next time.